Hey, it's some old guy coding again today, and uh, you know, in a recent video here, uh, Solius Genesius, I'm probably saying the name wrong, and I really apologize, but he asked if there was any plans to uh, laser cut out any parts, and uh, I thought that'd be kind of interesting to take a look at, and uh, I wanted to start with uh, revisiting just cutting something simple like paper, because I think I've uh, got a couple of things to show you that I've a couple of ideas I've stole from somebody else, and we'll get into that in a minute. But first, I want to just uh, show you uh, the pattern we're going to cut today, and uh, let me go out to the website where I got this from real quick. Uh, and this is off the uh, Chotec uh, laser uh, cutter and engraver website. Um, they have some really cool looking machines here and of course uh, if uh, you have to contact them for the prices I can't afford them so <laughs> so there we are but they do have some patterns here that I think we could uh, use today including um, I kind of like the uh, the room divider pattern if I could find it here again where did that go ah right here room divider screen so I'm not going to make a room divider, but I'm going to use one of these patterns to um, to uh, do a paper cut today, and probably that one right there. So you can download their um, template here, and then I saved it as a PDF file uh, to my computer, and I opened it up in in Draw here, a graphic rather, and uh, lo and behold, it loaded up the one I wanted to cut. So. Um, here it is in graphic. I've exported it from graphic as an SVG file, and now I'm going to go into ESTL Cam here, and I've loaded it up. So I've set my grid pattern in ESTL Cam to be a 8.5 by 11 uh, standard size sheet of paper. So I'm going to uh, take this guy and uh, size him down a little bit. Resize right there. So it. And I want to center it in my eight and a half, eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper, but I need a little bit more border out there, I think. So I'm going to shrink it down just a little more, and I'll show you why here in a moment. I don't have the spacer, the uh, material to cut a full size room divider anyway, and this laser uh, it probably won't do it. <laughs> Maybe after a few months of cutting. So I think I'm fairly happy with that where it's at in there. So let's zoom right in. And we'll get out of the, the move thing here before I mess something up. So this is going to be a piece of paper inside the, the grid. And um, so let's just go ahead and pick a, a laser setting here. I'm going to go 30 millimeters per second. We'll start there. Let's go 20. Um, unfortunately, ESTL Cam doesn't allow you to uh, set different laser power settings in one job. The laser power setting is just set one time under uh, setup here and let's see if I can find it here it would be under texts uh, come on text uh, laser plasma so here's where you set your uh, laser on and your laser off uh, values so the uh, laser on power isn't built into this table but that's fine now we'll just turn it on all the way and we'll vary our speed of cut here for uh, some different uh, 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 to see what works best and of course, what we want to do here, uh, being this is a laser job, we want to, uh, in the setup here, basic settings, make sure that the uh, uh, start and end is at the origin, so it's not moving the z-axis on it, and uh, give a clearance plane of zero. This is one spot where you can put zero and it doesn't seem to affect anything. I'm going to engrave this pattern and of course these parts inside will fall out hopefully or be at least be cut out eventually and this uh, outside piece uh, should be cut too but hopefully we'll make that the last one to cut. So let's take a look at this again. We're going to go up to automatic functions. Uh, let's see, create auto uh, objects automatically and uh, I'll take that guy off just in case. I don't think it'll do anything. Engrave and engrave other shapes. So let's see, we'll go right through there and it's working away. Look at it go. Ta-da! All right, we're all done. So now we wanna make sure that this outside path is the last thing to be cut. So let's do select. We've got that guy there.
machining order, we're going to go uh, minus one, I think it is, to make it last. We'll give that a try. And tool path depth, uh, is just a, a minimum 0.1. We really don't want it moving the head as little as possible um, because we're focused on the laser. Or uh, we've got the laser focused, rather, uh, where it should be. In fact, that should be the same uh, depth for all of those. We'll just do point 0.1. All right, so now let's take a look, and we'll save this as a CNC program once, and we'll see if we made this outside piece the last one to be cut. So we'll save this. All right, now let's hit play and see where this starts to cut. It looks like it's going to start on the inside, so I'm thinking that I've got the outside set to last. So let's speed this guy up just a bit. Kind of get a feel for what happens here. It's cruising around. And apparently it's done already. So I think we're good. We'll give that a try. As you can see, the depth of cut is very, very short. We, we need to uh, specify a depth of cut on ESTL cam. If we make these values zero, or if we say a depth of cut of zero, uh, strange things will happen, so we don't want to do that. All right, so there we have it. Let's uh, go downstairs and cut a piece of paper. Now, I know we've done something like this before, but I've got something new to show you here. Some ideas that I've stolen from another gentleman. Um, in fact, let's take a look at that right now. We'll tag this into the system later. Um, if and he does this RD Works Learning Lab. And it's very, very interesting, the stuff he does. And he's very scientific uh, about the way he goes about uh, things. He's a, he's a, a engineer. And it's uh, fascinating to see what he goes through here. Even if it really, some of the stuff, you know, it's much higher power than what we're probably going to be doing on the mostly printed CNC, and CNC machine. And the software is different, but the techniques and ideas are uh, still usable. <laughs> Look at this. He, he did one with a t-shirt logo. I think that's great. Um, I'm scrolling down here trying to find the one that I'm looking for. And uh, lots of interesting information. I really suggest you go out and take a look and and uh, you'll learn a lot about uh, the Chinese lasers that you can buy. And uh, heck, you might even get one sometime. I'd like to. Uh, we'll keep going here. Uh, look at all this work he's done. That's amazing. And he uh, goes through the machine and uh, shows you how to focus and adjust things and tries different mirrors, including some homemade mirrors. Um, it's truly amazing. It sounds like I have an upset cat down here someplace. So now we're getting close. We want to take a look for the first of the Christmas cards that he made here. Ah, this one right here. So I'm just going to pop out here a bit. He's talking about designing in uh, um, RD Works. And a lot of the techniques and ideas can apply to any other software that we'd be using too. But I want to go out here to where he uh, demonstrates this idea. Where he's got um, panels. Let me flip over a little bit. Instead of uh, cutting the material on the surface of something where you can get uh, burn and reflections. Um, come on, computer, load. He's created these little panels. Here we can see it right here. Um, with holes in up against a metal plate. Um, and these holes are spaced out. And he puts uh, uh, little items in there called pogo pins. Or little metal spring-loaded uh, gold pins used in testing electronics and uh, other and certain types of connectors. But uh, I didn't uh, have pogo pins or want to buy pogo pins. I have an alternative and I've 3D printed it. And we'll go downstairs and look at that. But I just wanted to give this gentleman credit for the idea. And uh, certainly, certainly go out and take a look at this uh, gentleman's uh, videos. They are fantastic and educational. So let's go back to uh, cutting us some paper. So I initially just started uh, by cutting this directly on the board. And if you can see here carefully, uh, if the camera will focus uh, the browning around the edges of the cuts back there. And this is the back side of the... Uh, of the uh, cut. And that's what we're trying to avoid. 
So before we try it the second time, I've got a few modifications to make. Um, one thing was that, uh, you, see, you see I've got the head off here. No, maybe you can't. There, now you can see I've got the laser head and the Z-axis off here. Um, you know, the wind blowing down out of the, the laser module here tends to scatter all those uh, bits and pieces around the area. And I'd like to just have them fall down. So, um, what I've designed here is something to try to redirect the, uh, the wind from that. Mount this, I'm going to mount this on here and we'll give it a try once. The advantage of the wind is it certainly puts out any fires <laughs> that might be uh, starting. Uh, the bad thing about it is, uh, of course, it, it blows parts around, it lifts the piece of uh, paper off the, the focal plane just because of the wind. So here is the uh, little holder for the, uh, for the light, for the camera, for that endoscopic camera. And uh, you know you can move this as needed and focus uh, and, and turn this end here as uh, as needed to get into the position that you want to record at. And as I said before, once again, this will uh, clamp down. Put a clamp on her so she doesn't move. So as you can see here, there's no burning on back this time. It looks really great. Um, so I think uh, we're going to leave it here now and move on to uh, cutting something a little thicker with the next episode with the new tools and techniques that we have here now. Thanks for watching.